Father, we ask that you make a way, even where it seems there is no way, in the destiny, in the life, in the workplace of anyone here, in the business, in the career of anyone here. Father, make a way where it seems there is no way. Make a river in the desert. Cause everyone online, on site this morning to begin to experience favor at work. We give you praise for what you are said to do. For we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Let the people say amen. Please be seated. Hallelujah. The, I, there is a book I wrote some years ago. Uh, this book I wrote about 15 years ago. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. I wrote this book about 15 years ago. And one of the chapters is so relevant even this month. One of the chapters is so relevant even this, in this service when we are talking about favor at work. Say, Lord, I need favor at work. If you don't need it, you don't have to say it. If you need it, say it loudly. I need favor at work. And so I want to, uh, it's, uh, I tie to this winning the, I mean, in that book, I tie to it winning the art of your employer at work. But this time, I want us to call it finding favor at work. Finding favor at work. Finding favor at work. Every child of God is an ambassador of Christ. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, I think verse 20 or 21, that we are Christ's ambassadors. To be an ambassador means to be a representative. So if you are a mechanic, you are God's representative in that field, in that space. If you are an accountant, you are God's representative in that space. If you are a tailor or fashion designer or a caterer or a marketer, whatever you, whoever you are, whatever you are doing, you are God's representative in that particular field and space. And what it means to be God's representative, God's ambassador, is that you are supposed to extend the kingdom of God into the space that you are. The Bible says there was a time Jesus answered the disciples. He said, don't look here and there looking for the kingdom of God. He said, the kingdom of God is in you. That means we're expected that everywhere we are, we are supposed to be an extension of God's kingdom. Everybody say, I'm, God, I'm the extension of God's kingdom. Say it boldly, I'm the extension of God's kingdom. That's who we are. And Christianity is far, far more than bless me. God wants to bless you and make you a blessing. God is not interested in just blessing you and I. God's ultimate is to make you a blessing. He told Abraham, I'll bless you. And I will make you a blessing. If a church starts in a vicinity, in an environment, God is not expecting that church alone to be blessed. God expects that church to become a blessing. Are you hearing what I'm saying? If you get a job in, bank, in the bank right now, the major reason why God gave you the job in that bank is not just to bless you. It's ultimately to make you he will bless you, there's no doubt about that, but to make you what? A blessing. To make you an extension of his blessing. To make you an extension of his kingdom. Are you following me? This is the essence of Christianity. Christianity is not, let me just go to church so he can bless me. That would be like half big bread. It is let me go to church so he can bless me and make me a blessing. Are you following this? So we are Christ's ambassador so that we can extend the kingdom culture everywhere we go. I can't remember what they call this in chemistry. Maybe they call it uh, osmosis or uh, it's a long time I did chemistry or diffusion. But I know each of these two words we did in chemistry. When you drop a substance at this corner in a liquid, that substance in a short time will take over the space. 
Diffusion. Osmosis. Osmosis. Okay. Uh, some people say osmosis. Some people say diffusion. It's osmosis. It's osmosis. Osmosis. From a higher concentration to a lower concentration. That's the idea. So when the Bible says we are the salt of the world, it's not just saying we should be salt to ourselves. There is no benefit for salt when all the salt is doing is to salt itself. A salt is supposed to not only salt itself, but to salt everywhere, every space it finds itself. Are you following this? So, whatever you are working right now, whichever business you are doing, you are Christ representative. Everybody say, I'm Christ representative. Say it boldly. I am Christ representative. You are representing Christ. You are representing the kingdom of God in that space. Praise the name of the Lord. And that is why an ambassador of Nigeria to U.S., is in U.S. to protect the interest of Nigeria. Am I correct? Huh? He is not in U.S. to protect his family interest. He is not in U.S. to protect his personal interest. He is not in U.S. to protect the U.S. interest. He is in the U.S. to protect the interest of the country that he represents. As a matter of fact, According to international law, every embassy is a piece, is a, me, is a measure of their country. If, you, if you're an American in Nigeria, if you're an American, you're living in Nigeria, if the Nigerian government wants to arrest you, if you can make it to the U.S. embassy in Ekoi and run inside the U.S. embassy, the Nigerian government does not have the power, according to international law, to arrest you because it is like you have entered into the U.S. So the embassy of a country is a portion of that country in another country. Are you getting this? Huh? So if you get a job in the bank right now as a child of God, you are a piece of God's kingdom in that bank. And so by osmosis or diffusion, we have not verified that yet, but by any of those principles, there are supposed to be movement from the higher concentration to the lower concentration. That is, you are supposed to be a blessing. Everybody say, I'm a blessing. And where you are walking, you are supposed to experience God's favor. If God is to favor anybody in that environment, you are one of those who God should favor. Why? Because you are God's representative. You are representing God. Are you following this? So in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 20, it says, so we are Christ's ambassadors. What are we? Christ's ambassadors. So that we will be blessed. It's not negotiable. We will be blessed. But that we will be a blessing is in our hand. Because you can be blessed and not be a blessing. But the purpose of you being blessed is so that you can what? You can be a blessing. Nobody say I'll be a blessing. So you need to win the favor because in order for you to be blessed at work, in order for you to be favored, to be blessed at work, you have to be favored at work. Abi? If you're going to be favored in that bank, then you have to experience favor with God in that bank. You have to experience favor before your employer, favor before your superior, favor before the clients, the customers. If you as a worker, if you experience favor from the owner of the bank, the, 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 your superior, your colleagues, your subordinates, and the customers, you are blessed already because God transports his blessing through his favor. Are you following me? If God is going to bless you at work, he will first of all favor you at work. And what does it mean for God to favor you? That means the lines will be falling onto you in your pleasant places at work. If you are recommending anybody for any big thing at work, God will recommend you. If God is opening some doors at work, you'll be part of it. Are you following me? 
I see God favoring you. Oh, you are not saying amen. amen. If you read the story of Joseph in Genesis 39, Genesis 30, 30, 30, verse 40, and the rest of those Genesis, you see that everywhere Joseph found himself, he was favored. When he was working for his father, he was favored. How did we know? He was the only child with a cloth of many colors. When he moved to uh, Egypt and became Potiphar's house boy, he was favored because he became, he was the one in charge of all the other servants. Even the people he met in that house, he became the ogre. When he was taken to prison, he was favored. The Bible says there was nothing that was done in the prison that was not done by Joseph. He was the one in charge of all other prisoners. Even right in the prison, favor, he found favor and he became the prime minister. If you check the story of Joseph, you see, you trace favor at every junction. I see favor vis visible in your life. At every junction of your career, you will experience favor. At every junction of your business, you will experience favor. You see, labor is good, but you need favor on top of your, you need favor on top of your labor. One day of favor is more than 1,000 days of labor. If God favor you now, it will, it, will, it will shoot you forward beyond what a thousand day of labor can do for you. So we all need to be favored by God. We all need to experience the uncommon favor, the unlimited favor, the unmerited favor of God in our place of assignment. If all we are doing is that we're working hard, we're, we're laboring, if you're not experiencing favor, what will happen is that you will be sweating before you, you eat. But favor makes you eat bigger than your sweat. When you have favor, your, 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 what you eat will be bigger than your sweat. But when all you do is to labor, then your sweat and your labor and, your, and what you eat will be the same. And that's why I pray for everyone here that you experience God's divine favor. I pray that you win the favor of your superior at work. I pray that you win the, the favor of your, co of, of your colleagues at work. I pray that you experience the favor of your subordinate at work. I pray that you experience the favor of your clients at work. I pray that every human being you come across will favor you. Both men and women, boys and girls will favor you. Old and young will favor you. When favor is at work in your life, you will see things move without you moving it. I'm not saying you will not move few things. You try and move, but some things will move without your efforts. You will see, you receive favor. So you need to win favor, the favor of your superior. If you want to climb the ladder of success, if you want to climb the ladder of success in your business, you need God to favor you even at work. The level of favor that you enjoy at work will be determined by how much you have been able to win the heart of the people around you.